Hello everyone. I am very very happy to come your way again with reflections on the Sunday readings. This Sunday we celebrate the feast of Jesus Christ, the universal king. Dear friends, whenever you take a look at the cross or the crucifix, you see an inscription here which normally reads I N R I. This inscription is derived uh, from the inscription that Jesus, uh, that Pilate wrote on Jesus' cross, if you read John chapter 19, verse 19. So Pilate wrote an inscription on Jesus' cross uh, when he was crucified on Calvary. And he wrote it in three languages. And the inscription was that he wrote there, Jesus of Nazareth. King of the Jews, or Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. So it was written in Latin, it was written in Greek, and it was written in Hebrew. And the inscription which you normally find at the top of the cross, which is I-N-R-I, is uh, uh, taken from the Latin, you know, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Euderum. And so the I is Jesus, and the N is Nazarenus, Nazareth, and then the R is Rex, King, and Euderum is of, of the Jews. And so Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So that's what is written there. The Hebrew is normally, the Hebrew Aramaic is normally Yeshua Natsri, Melech HaYehudim. And then you have also the Greek Jesus Ho Nazoraios Ho Basileus Stone Udayon. You know, so it's it's like that. My my Greek and my Hebrew and my Latin is all <laughs> mixed up in that way. But beloved, the point here is when Pilate wrote that inscription, it was written to mock Jesus that he was the king of the Jews. But in that mockery contained a message of truth, a message fulfilling the prophecies of old, that Jesus Christ is the king of the universe. Jesus Christ is not only the king of the Jews, but he is actually the king of the universe. So you read Matthew chapter 2 verse 2, and the Magi, or the wise men, from the east, coming to Jerusalem, they're looking for the child Jesus, and they, they go to Herod's house and they ask, where is the child to be born king of the Jews? And of course, the prophets have already foretold his birth, Jesus' birth, Emmanuel, who will be uh, God with us. Jesus is the king of the universe. And today's liturgy brings us to acknowledge Jesus' kingship over all creation and Jesus' kingship over all humans. And for us Catholics, today our hearts are warmed up and filled with joy as we show devotion and as we show gratitude and as we adore our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Brothers and sisters, here is why I want to reflect with you. If Jesus Christ is our King, then we owe Jesus Christ all our allegiance. As Christians, as we hold high Jesus as our King, we owe Jesus our allegiance. And as you know, every kingdom has its own laws and norms. For the kingdom of God Jesus' law, the law of the kingdom, is the law of love. And that is the law that we are invited to follow. So today, as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, we are brought to acknowledge the kingship of Christ and to follow his law of love. And we also come to understand that this king of kings, this Lord of Lords, 
Jesus Christ is not a bossy king. He is a servant king, a king who serves. That's why in the first reading, which is taken from Ezekiel, we hear that God promises that he himself will come and shepherd his people. He says he will bind up those who are injured. He will provide strength for the weak. And, and then he would, he would reign with justice and feed uh, the sheep with, with, with justice. And then as for those who are exploiting people, he will destroy. And so we see that God's kingdom is a kingdom of justice. And it's a kingdom that seeks the well-being of every human person. It's a kingdom that seeks to care for the human person. And Jesus Christ came to demonstrate this kingship of God, a servant king who cares for every human being out of love and who also serves out of humility. We Christians are invited to emulate the kingship of Jesus Christ. Oh, we know as Catholics that through our baptism, we share in the king kingly prophetic and priestly function of Jesus Christ. So you are a king and you are a queen. If you're a Catholic and you've been baptized, the chrism oil, which was used to anoint your crown, actually configured you into Christ and you came to share in his kingly function, his prophetic function, and in his priestly function. We are kings and queens unto our God. And we are also invited to be seven kings and seven queens, caring for one another out of love and serving one another out of humility. And that's why the gospel uh, for this Sunday brings us to reflect on how we have to care for one another. Taking from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was sick, you cared for me. When I was hungry, you gave me food to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. When I had no clothing, I was naked, you clothed me. And Jesus says, those who follow this will enter into his kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray that through the celebration of this feast, all of us who are Catholics will obey the law of love in the kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts, that God will continue to reign in our hearts, in our soul, and in our lives. Today, we have a share in his kingdom. Let us try to reign and to reign as seven kings, serving one another out of humility, caring for one another out of love. Brothers and sisters, no matter who is king, no matter who is president, no matter who is prime minister, for us Christians, Jesus is our king. We respect all human authorities, but Jesus is our king. Let us always remember, Jesus is our king, and to him we owe our first allegiance. May God bless and keep you. May God protect you and continue to bless you and give you all the graces you need to continue to serve with humility, to continue to care for one another out of love. Shalom.